All right, we got KJ Jefferson, Andrew Armstrong in the room with us. Tom Murphy, get us going. All right, we'll do. All right, KJ. Um, so there's been some change since we last talked to you. <laughs> um, how would you say things have changed? What, what's what's the mood like now with the change? Uh, it's been great. Uh, everybody is bought in. Everybody excited. Uh, to play, go out there and play for uh, Coach Guy. Uh, he's excited as well to be uh, uh, have an opportunity like he, uh, this one he has coming up. So everybody's excited. Everybody's buying into the process of what he uh, he's trying to get done with the offense side. So everybody's buying. It's been a great environment. How might things look different for you, uh, just from your personal you know standpoint? Uh, it was it, it's it's pretty much the same. I uh, we mean, but from a standpoint, I mean, Coach Guy has come in. He's more kind of a, a laid back coach. Uh, he corrects us when we make mistakes, but he's not just really, really hard on us. Um, he kind of try to let us play. I mean, cause he played the position, so he know what it, what to expect from the quarterback position. So he kind of just laid back and let us do our own thing. But when he needs to coach us, he's very, uh, he gonna, we very coachable. Andrew, you lost your position coach, but I guess now he's he's the boss of the whole offense. What do you, What's your take on the, this change? I mean, you know, I'm really happy for both of them. You know, Coach Keith coming up being a wide receiver coach and, and Coach Guyton, you know, becoming an OC. You know, it's a life change. That's a life changing thing for, you know, both of them. And I'm I'm really uh happy for them. And I know they're grateful for the opportunity as well. But you know, it's it's still the same. It's still the same, you know. We we still go through our receiver drills, you know, same, you know, just making sure that nothing was lost as much, you know. What what can you say about Coach Guyton's maybe communication skills and maybe how you feel like he'll handle the new responsibilities? Uh, he he handling good right now. You know, it's, he's not he's not panicking as you would think a new a new uh coach or anything like that would would do in this in this time that we're in. Um, getting in here in the middle of the season, he hasn't he has you know he shows a lot of poise. He's very calm, like KJ said. He 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 makes sure everything is right. If it's wrong, you know we just do it again, get it right, and then go on to the next thing. KJ, you've been to the swamp. Uh, can you talk about your what you remember from 2020 and just what you expect from this Florida team? Well, it was really uh, humid down there, uh, so hydration gonna be a big thing for us. Um, I mean, we really want much. I mean, because it was COVID, so it was kind of hard to be able to get the full feeling of being in the stadium. But um, it's, I feel like it's gonna be a great atmosphere this um, weekend. Um, and looking forward to just uh, both teams just coming out, competing at a very high level. Uh, we coming out, establishing what we want to establish on, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, getting into a rhythm early. I think that's going to be key, getting into a rhythm early and then putting together a four-quarter uh, game and a, a game plan that we can uh, be efficient on and um, score points. All right. And then, Andrew, just your thoughts on what you see from Florida defensively. You know, I just – I'm not going to say what I see. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just say you know we we're, we're building up a game plan against them you know ready to go into the swamp and just you know do what we do. Bob, go ahead. Bob, you muted. Yeah, mic muted. Sorry, can you hear me now? Sorry about that. Um, hey, uh, Coach Pittman was saying the other day that they've cut out 30 to 35 percent of the playbook. Well, what's that been like, and how do you think that could be a positive for the offense? I mean, KJ, you could take that first. Uh, it's just been a positive. I mean, guys don't have to think as much. Uh, guys can be confident in the plays that we're calling, um, calling plays that we're we're good at or we had success on and try to get guys to play faster and play more confident rather than thinking a lot, playing slower and uh, scared to make a mistake. So we have the um, the plan has been good so far. Uh, we've cut down, trimmed down some of the playbooks so guys can be able to play faster and just move forward and be able to play confident. Andrew, you, you want to take that too? Uh, yeah, same same as he said, you know, move, making it smaller, you know, it's, it's less thinking you have to do. You're more, you're more focused on the play you got to do at, at hand and it makes you play way faster than you having to think about, you know, another play that, that sounds like that player and things like that. And, and KJ, another thing Sam said was that uh, I think you had like 29 dropbacks against uh, Mississippi State, and he said that should really be 8 to 10. How, how do you think that that'll help you maybe – being on the move more, maybe doing more what you did last year, not just dropping back as much? Uh, like I said, I mean, the game plan we have, I mean, we want to make sure uh, that I'm comfortable with uh, the uh, game plan that we have uh, that's building up. And main thing, make sure everybody else is comfortable with 
what we what we got um practicing on, what we've been building on, what we've been watching film on. So it's a uh, all around team effort. It's a unit thing. Um, so for whatever the game plan might be and the look that they give us, I mean, we're gonna take full advantage of it. But I mean, I don't want to say too much. So. And then obviously, you know, you guys are on offense. Jaheim Thomas is on defense, but he's having a big year as a as a newcomer like Andrew is. But just what do you guys thought about what Jaheim's the season he's had and how he's helped the defense? Maybe KJ could take that first, and then Andrew. Oh, he's been a, a great asset to the team. I mean, guys look up to him. Uh, he's a leader on this side of the ball. Um, so I mean, when you're a leader on, on the defense side of the ball, guys look up to guys respect you, and guys want to be able to. Um, compete with you at a very high level. I mean, you have a great uh, football IQ. He has a nose for the ball, so he's always around the ball. And I mean, it's just great to see a guy that come, that transfer in and had the ability to come in and uh, make plays early on and had great success on a, a team that he's uh, coming from the portal. Just like KJ said, you know, Jaheim, you know, he he's very he not he's not so much, you know, vocal guy, but he just know you know exactly what he do what he's doing. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. He know what um, what plays to what plays he's doing, and he just he just uh, all time you know playmaker all around. Thanks, Jackson, all you. <laughs> yeah, uh, KJ. Obviously, you got you know Kenny's the new OC, but he's also the new quarterbacks coach. I'm just wondering, like you know, how much have you worked with Kenny before this change, and uh, you know what has it been like kind of working with him, not only with the whole offense but just on the quarterback side of things. Uh, we kind of working him into uh, the things that we was doing, which because you know as far as quarterback drills and everything. So he's he's learning as well, uh, different drills and different things we do. Uh, so I mean, it's been fun so far. I mean, like I said, he played the position before, so he kind of know he kind of knows some quarterback things that he brought and that we've added to our toolbox and um, had a great outlook on different things from the uh, quarterback perspective and what we're seeing and an uh, easy way to be able to dissect what the defense is trying to um, disguise or what the defense is trying to get into. So he's been a great asset to the uh, quarterback room. I mean, we've been coachable. We took his coaching. And like I said, just, we all we all around. We learned to coach Guyton, um, not as a receiver coach, but as our quarterback coach and as an offense coordinator. And, I mean, he's learned from us as well. So it's, it's just all around great uh, team effort, group effort. Have you have you watched? I know some of his highlights from playing at Ohio State have gone around on social media. Have you watched any of his highlights? Uh, yeah, I watched some of them like a while back. Uh, we always go back and forth about who was the best, uh, the best runner, and who had the best uh, run, and all things like that. So, I mean, we always have fun with it, have jokes with it. I mean, just having a guy like Coach Guy, uh, just a positive person, a great person to be around, great uh, coach, great man. So, just having a guy like that to be able to coach you and have fun with, and also he played the position, so it's just fun to be able to just take some time off and just joke around. And Andrew, I'm curious if. Uh... Maybe when he was working with the receivers, was there any ways that you could maybe tell that, you know, he played the quarterback position uh, in college when he was working with y'all? Definitely. Um, you know, when we, when we were in meetings, the way he describes, you know, certain zones, certain defenses, you just know that he knows defense in, inside out. You know, he, he, he points out, you know, uh, a stud or, you know, what side the nickel going to play on and things like that. It was just he, – he just he – just, you know, knows exactly what he's talking about. You could tell, like, he played quarterback at a high level. Tom, close it out. Andrew, you guys have to win out to be bowl eligible. Does that – you feel like that puts a little pressure on you to, to go down there and win? Uh, we just going, you know, we just going to go out there and play football. You know, I don't, I don't feel any pressure. I just feel like uh, we, we know how we are as a team, and we're going to, you know, we're going to do great. Uh, yeah, KJ, same to you. Uh, I feel like we just got to go out there and execute at a very high level, go out there, play high brand of ball, and then just go out there and just have fun with it. I mean, just that's the main thing. Take advantage of this opportunity, uh, knowing that we got four games left, and take them uh, one day at a time, one game at a time, just have fun with it and just keep building the bond and being close together as a football team. Had you felt like there was too much offense, like there was just too much to to, to deal with, that we had, had it gotten frustrating to you? Um, uh, at times it, it did get frustrating, uh, from my play, uh, perspective, but I mean, just being able to just have, like I said, have guys just playing faster and playing confident and not scared to make a mistake or be thinking uh, a lot during the play or before the play, their mind is thinking about a thousand different things when you just 
slim it down a little bit and have don't focus on one thing and make sure that executing that one thing at a very high level, which creates yep. uh, confidence in having guys play faster. Yeah, that pl that applies to you too, right? You feel like you'll yeah, be of fair. course, yeah, of course. All right, and uh, just finally, Arkansas has never won a game at Florida, KJ. Um, what if, what if you guys are the ones to do that? Um, it'll be go down in history. I mean, it'll be, it'll be fun. Uh, I feel like that'll bring some excitement and uh, some pride back into the uh, to the building um, and for the state as well. And uh, my teammates and myself, we need that. We need that that spark, that uh, that pride, and just be able to go into a hostile environment like Florida and be able to come away victorious will be a big deal. Thank y'all. Bob, Sarah, hand come up. Yeah, had a couple more. If that's okay. Um, you guys had an open day. You know, Florida got bashed by Georgia pretty good. How do you think maybe, you know, you had to go on the road and everything, but how do you think that could help you all that you all had an open day, just like Mississippi State had an open day before they came up to Fayetteville? Uh, I mean, it's always good to have an uh, open week, uh, get guys back healthy, um, get a, a start on the, uh, your opponent, uh, get some things to work in for his plays, uh, practice uh, different plays, and see if you like the plays, see if it's going to uh, benefit us on Saturday. So it's always a great advantage to be able to have a, a bye week and then roll into the next week and have an opponent to play. To opponent to play. So, I mean, we're looking forward to it. You got a thought on that, Andrew, just how the open day could benefit you all getting a little break finally? I mean, you know, just like KJ said, everybody getting healthy, us being able to watch film early, you know, uh, more days, you know, than they get to. It's just it, it was a great opportunity for us to get the bye week when we did, and we're just going to come out and play strong. I just got one more. Um, you know, Josh Brown obviously played at Florida the last couple of years. What, um, what, what do you guys – how do you guys think he'll react to going down there? Has he been talking much about it or just kind of what are your thoughts on Josh going back to to play at Florida? I feel like he'll be fired up about it, just knowing that's his former team. Uh, he played in that stadium. I mean, he know what to expect. And uh, so I'm, I feel like he's going to be fired up about it. Um, he came to practice with a, a different mindset, a very competitive mindset, a different edge. So I feel like he has a lot uh, going into this game, and uh, he just want to prove himself and have fun with it. You have a thought, Andrew? Or... <laughs> I know, it's the same thing. <laughs> What's up, guys? Okay. Thanks, guys. All right, John, you want to kick us off? I will. Hey, hey guys, Um, what do y'all make of the Florida offense um, when you break them down? What's the scouting report on those guys, Jaheim? I would say, you know, very good quarterback. They run a lot of screens, a lot of like big X's, a lot of waggles. So just we just got to be able to fit the run. It's a lot of motions, be able to fit the run and know be sound assignment, play a sound assignment football. Trey, what do you see from them? Uh, very talented team. Uh, they do a lot of uh, stretches, a lot of zones, things of that sort. So we just uh, locking in, uh, taking it one play at a time. You know, looking forward to playing. Uh, there's been some change on the other side of the ball since you guys last played. Um, have you noticed uh, maybe a, any kind of different energy or anything um, since uh, Kenny Guyton moved up to be offensive coordinator? Yeah, I would say a lot, a lot of tempo. You know, just just a lot more, just change of energy. So just we just very confident in our offense. Yeah, we, we're very confident um, in the change, and you know, just gonna take it one day at a time, one game at a time. Trey, you've been to Florida for games. Uh, what's what do you what can you tell your teammates about the atmosphere y'all are going into? Oh, it's it's pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest. This is pretty cool. Florida fans are real hype. I mean, but sure, that's just motivation for us. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. I might circle back at the end. Thanks, guys. Go ahead, Bob. Um, hey, Jaheim, you know, I know you, you got to play a lot of snaps at Cincinnati, you know, had a lot of tackles and but you know, this year you're you're the guy, you know, I think you're third in the SEC in tackle. Just kind of what's the season been like for you? Uh, you know, just being able to just come out and just ball out with my guys every week has just been very motivate very motivating. So just having the just having the scheme that we are and just having the coaches that we are has really has helped me to translate my game. What what do you think you've done a really good job of to I think you got 74 tackles and you seem like you're usually double digits leading the team. Um, what, what do you think you've done real well? What's, what's been working for you? Uh, I would say my, my, this is just the D line, you know, the D line, keeping the keeping offensive line off of me and just having instincts to find the ball. Has this season gone better than you thought it would, or has it gone about like you thought it would, or how, how's that been? Uh, so, you know, I have a lot of confidence. So 
Uh, I'm very confident in like how the season been going. I pretty much thought it would be going like that. And and Tree, uh, what what have you thought about how Jaheem's played? He's just, has he surprised you at all? No, nah, he hasn't surprised me at all. Um, you know what I'm saying? We know we getting. That's true. Hey, we confident. You know what I'm saying? So like, Jaheem, yeah, he coming. What well, what is it about his play that really uh really impresses you? Definitely his instincts. Uh, he also is vocal on the field. So if I if I'm looking, I'm looking for the signal on the sideline. I don't see it. He's very vocal to echo the call. Uh, very aware guy. His awareness is, is great. Uh, he comes downhill. Smart guy. Talented guy. Everything about him. And you guys, you know, Florida had to play Georgia last week, a pretty tough game. You guys had an open day. How do you think that could benefit you on just uh, how good was it to get a to get a break? I would say just having a full week of just preparation and then having a whole nother week to watch the game that they play. So I feel like that has helped us a lot, you know, just being able to have that film study and just having a break off really had helped us heal our bodies. And yeah, yeah I'm, trying, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh Trey. yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say the uh, preparation is a big thing. Rest, recovery, uh, just ready to un unlock and load. And uh, Jaheim, I'm thinking you didn't go through spring ball at Cincinnati or here, right? Am I right about that? Yeah, you're right. I guess you're you're putting to test the theory that you you don't need spring ball the way you're playing. But uh, given that, has it surprised you at all that you've been this productive? That, that you know didn't really. I mean, you just kind of went from the get go. Yeah, uh, guys. You know, I just I mean, just trying to shake the rust off and just being able to get back into the game and feel like myself. Okay, thanks, guys. Jackson. Yeah, you guys have both, you know, had bye weeks, obviously, in previous seasons, but I have to imagine this is the first time you've uh, had a bye week after playing four straight road games during the course of the season. Did it feel like this bye week in particular was kind of needed a little bit more than maybe off weeks you've had in the past, just given the kind of schedule you all have played this year? Uh, I would say uh, most definitely, you know, uh, just have, being able to have a bye week after uh, eight weeks straight. It's truly a blessing. So, yeah, I say it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, opportunity to rest and recovery, but also mentally prepare for our opponent. So, pretty good. Uh, Sam has kind of talked about like, despite all the offensive struggles and the change over there, the defensive side of the ball, even with all these the the losses and the losing streak, you guys have kind of maintained the the fire and and the and the hungriness. I mean, how have you guys kind of been able to? persevere through kind of the defeats and really kind of maintain your, your desire and, and be a really productive unit on that side of the football this year. Um, I would say just, just having confidence in our offense, you know, just cheering those guys on, cheering each other on, cheering the defense on, you know, just going out there, a lot of energy every time, every snap. Yeah. Just, uh, just also just motivating each and every one of our teammates, uh, knowing we have ahead of us, uh, Going in there very confident uh, as a team, so we just uh, keeping we just keeping the confidence and just taking everything one game at a time. Thanks, guys. Wrap us up, John. Yeah, guys. Uh, Sam Pittman said that he thought KJ showed even like more leadership last week, um, and you know he's still really engaged. Uh, Tree, what what did you see from KJ in terms of you know maybe overall team leadership? Uh, KJ definitely a, a vocal guy. Uh, everybody respect him. So when he talk, everyone listens. So I just feel like that trait about himself, it just God given. You know what I'm saying? And everybody just open their ears, open their eyes, and just watch him and also listen to him. So very respectable guy, I would say. Jaheim, your thoughts about maybe what you've heard heard and seen from KJ in the last week? Yeah, just like what he said, you know, a true leader, you know, leader of the leader of the team, leader of the offense. So just being able to just be vocal and just Put guys on your back and lead the team. What do y'all have to do to win Saturday, Tree? So we just we just gonna show what, what we capable of doing. Very confident in my team, and uh, just like I said, we're ready to unlock and load. So we just taking every everything one game at a time. We are just gonna go from there. All right, Jaheim, what has to what has to go well for you guys to give yourselves a chance down there? Oh, I would say you know just. Just energy, just passion, and just being able to just be passionate every snap and every time we come on the field. So just keeping that energy, keeping guys up, keeping keeping everybody going is what's truly helpless. Okay. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank, Thank you guys. You.